Arguments that prophecies of Muhammad in the Bible presaged his birth, teachings, and death have formed part of Muslim tradition from the early history of Muhammad's Ummah Arabic, Ummah T community although contested by Christians like John of Damascus. Muslim writers have expanded on these viewpoints and have argued that they can specifically identify references to Muhammad in the text of the Bible, both in the Jewish Tanakh and in the Christian New Testament. Several verses in the Quran, as well as several hadiths, state that Muhammad is described in the Bible. The apocryphal Gospel of Barnabas, which explicitly mentions Muhammad, has also been identified as an ancient prediction about the Prophet, but this book is widely recognized by scholars as a fabrication from the early modern age. Some Muslim writers argue that expectations of forthcoming prophets existed within the Jewish community from before the lifetime of Jesus through to that of Muhammad, and that Muhammad was the final fulfillment of these expectations. Muslims consider Jesus and other biblical figures, such as Moses and David, as having laid the groundwork for Muhammad's later efforts. In terms of Christian perspectives, some notable figures such as Martin Luther and John Calvin have interpreted Muhammad in the context of Bible prophecy as being either the false prophet or the Antichrist. However, many other Christian figures have taken alternate approaches. The 1910 Catholic Encyclopedia holds that, "...contradictory opinions have been expressed by scholars in the last three centuries," about Muhammad's "...moral character and sincerity," since Many of these opinions are biased either by an extreme hatred of Islam and its founder or by an extreme admiration, coupled with a hatred of Christianity. <inaudible> Biblical verses claimed to be prophecies of Muhammad <inaudible> Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 Topic. I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. It shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words which he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. 20 But the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Al-Samawal al-Maghribi, a medieval Jewish mathematician who converted to Islam, pointed to Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 in his book Confutation of the Jews as a prophecy fulfilled by Muhammad. Samawal argued in his book that since the children of Esau are described in Deuteronomy chapter 2 verses 4 to 6 and Numbers chapter 20 verse 14 as the brethren of the children of Israel, the children of Ishmael can also be described the same way. Some Muslim writers, like Muhammad Ali and Fethullah Gulen, have interpreted several verses in the Quran as implying that Muhammad was alluded to in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18, including Quran 46-10 and 73-15. Historians interpret Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 as referring to a future member of the community of Israel who reenacts the function of Moses, serving as act as a mediator for the covenant between YHWH and the Israelites. Walter Brueggemann writes that the primary requirement for the prophet, like the king in 1715, is that he or she must be a member of Israel, thoroughly situated in the traditions and claims of the Yahwistic covenant. The Gospels of Matthew and John both make Jesus out to be the prophet like Moses from Deuteronomy chapter 18. Topic. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2. Topic. He said, The Lord came from Sinai, and dawned on them from Seir, he shone forth from Mount Paran, and he came from the midst of ten thousand holy ones, at his right hand there was flashing lightning for them. Al-Samawal al-Maghribi referred to this verse also in his book as a prophecy of Muhammad. He said that Mount Sinai refers to Moses, Mount Seir, the Mount of Esau, refers to Jesus, and Mount Paran, the Mount of Ishmael, refers to Muhammad. Muhammad Ali also believed this passage prophesied Muhammad. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2 is part of the poem known as the Blessing of Moses spanning Deuteronomy chapter 33 verses 1 to 29. Scholars consider that the poem serves as Yahwistic declaration for the blessing of the future of Israel as a socially unified whole that will benefit and prosper through YHWH's beneficence. The poem relates YHWH movement from the south from Mount Sinai, the mountain where he resides, to his entrance on the scene as a formidable invading force. 
Topic: Isaiah chapter 29 verses 11 to 12. Topic: The entire vision will be to you like the words of a sealed book, which when they give it to the one who is literate, saying, "Please read this," he will say, "I cannot, for it is sealed." Twelve. Then the book will be given to the one who is illiterate, saying, "Please read this," and he will say, "I cannot read." Muslims interpret this verse as a prophecy of Muhammad, as tradition says that when the Archangel Gabriel commanded Muhammad to read something, he replied, I am not learned. Old Testament scholars believe that this passage refers to members of the Judahite community intentionally ignoring God's warnings of judgment. Topic. Isaiah chapter 42 Topic. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, he will bring forth justice to the nations. 2. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the street. 3. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish, he will faithfully bring forth justice. 4. He will not be disheartened or crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands will wait expectantly for his law. Muslim tradition holds that Isaiah chapter 42 predicted the coming of a servant associated with Kedar, the second son of Ishmael and who went on to live his life in Arabia, and so interpret this passage as a prophecy of Muhammad. According to the Hadiths, Muslims like Abd Allah ibn Amr ibn al as have believed that Muhammad was the servant of Isaiah chapter 42 during his very lifetime. Muhammad is believed by Muslims to be the chosen servant of God and his light. I. In 1892, Isaiah chapter 42 verses 1 to 4 was first identified by Bernhard Dumm as one of the servant songs in the book of Isaiah, along with as 49 to 1 minus 6, is 50 to 4 minus 7, and as 52 to 13 minus 53 to 12. The Old Testament identifies the servant of the servant songs as the Israelites in as, 41-8-9, is, 44-1, is, 44-21, is, 45-4, is, 48-20 and is, 49-3. John Barton and John Muddyman write that, "...the idea of a servant played a small part in the earlier chapters, being used as a designation of the unworthy Eliakim in 2220 and of the figure of David in 37 to 35, but it now comes to the fore as a description of major significance, the noun being used more than 20 times in chs. 40 to 55. Its first usage is obviously important in establishing the sense in which we are to understand it, and here it is clear that the community of Israel, Jacob is so described. Topic. Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 Topic. I will shake all the nations, and they will come with the wealth of all nations, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. According to some Muslim interpreters, Haggai's promise for the coming of wealth in the future to be a reference to Muhammad's advent. The wealth, Hamada in Hebrew, is closely rooted to the Arabic Hamad, which is personalized in the Arabic name Ahmad, an abbreviation of Muhammad. Muslims believe this is further indicated by Haggai saying that the Hamada will go on to bring shalom, something Muslims believe was accomplished by Muhammad. According to scholars, Haggai chapter 2 verses 1 to 9 is discussing YHWH's eschatological return in the future in order to restore and rebuild the temple. In verse 6, the passage says that God S return is in a little while once more Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 the language being used to accentuate its imminence while the Hebrew phrase for once more refers to earlier events specifically in the context of Haggai chapter 2 alluding to God S initial appearance on Mount Sinai YHWH S return causes all of creation the heavens and the earth and the nations v. 7 to shake, and the nations respond in submission by bringing all their wealth to YHWH's house, the temple. Topic. Canonical Gospels Topic. Topic. Paraclete. 
I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Helper, that he may be with you forever. 17 That is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. 13 But when he, the Spirit of Truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. 14 He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. Many Muslim scholars have argued that the Greek words parakletos comforter and parikletos famous, illustrious were used interchangeably, and therefore, these verses constitute Jesus prophesying the coming of Muhammad. Topic. Gospel of Barnabas Topic. Some Muslims including Muhammad Abu Zahra claim that changes were made to the present-day canon of the Christian Bible, by excluding material that represented the authentic message of Jesus, claiming that the authentic tradition is represented in the Gospel of Barnabas, which contains predictions of Muhammad. A later Muslim writer, Atta ur rahim claimed that the Gospel Barnabas was accepted as a canonical gospel in the churches of Alexandria up until 325. The Gospel of Barnabas is generally seen to be a fabrication made during the Renaissance. Non-Islamic view Early Christian writers claimed that Muhammad was predicted in the Bible, as a forthcoming antichrist, false prophet, or false messiah. According to Albert Harani, initial interactions between Christian and Muslim peoples were characterized by hostility on the part of the Europeans because they interpreted Muhammad in a biblical context as being the antichrist. The earliest known exponent of this view was John of Damascus in the 7th century. In c. 850 CE about 50 Christians were killed in Muslim ruled Cordoba, Andalusia after a Christian priest named Perfectus said that Muhammad was one of the false Christs prophesied in Matthew 24 minutes 16 seconds and 42 milliseconds. The monk Eulogius of Cordoba c. 800-859 AD justified the views of Perfectus and the other martyrs of Cordoba, saying that they witnessed against the angel of Satan and forerunner of Antichrist, Muhammad, the heresiarch. John Calvin argued that, "...the name Antichrist does not designate a single individual, but a single kingdom which extends throughout many generations," saying that both Muhammad and the Catholic popes were, "...antichrists." The prophecy of the, four kingdoms of Daniel," in chapter 7 of the Book of Daniel has also been interpreted by Christians as a prediction of Muhammad. Eulogius argued that Muhammad was the fourth beast in the prophesy. Another medieval monk, Alvarez, argued that Muhammad was the eleventh king that emerged from the fourth beast. According to historian John Tolan, In Daniel's description of this beast, Alvarez sees the career of the Antichrist Muhammad and his disciples. This eleventh king who arises after the others, diverse from the first, who subdues three kings, is it not Muhammad, who vanquished the Greeks, the Romans, and the Goths? and he shall speak great words against the Most High. Did he not deny the divinity of Christ, thus, according to St. John, showing himself to be an antichrist? He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Is this not a prediction of the persecutions inflicted by the Muslims, in particular of the martyrdoms of Cordoba? He will think to change times and laws. Did he not introduce the Muslim calendar and the Quran? Since the 7th century, the Prophet of Islam S name has been the focus of several stereotypes. Greek and Latin sources presented exaggerated and sometimes wrong stereotypes in literature, and the orthographic forms, which varied among them, were shared by two Western cultures, Spain and France. These variants and forms of the Prophet of Islam's name formulated stereotypes that molded the opinion and feelings of the West toward the leader of the new religion. Their references played a principal role in introducing Muhammad and his religion to the West as a false prophet who wrote the Quran, a Saracen prince or deity, the biblical beast, a schismatic from Christianity, a satanic creature, and the Antichrist. 
Topic See also Topic Christian Messianic prophecies Topic References Topic Topic Bibliography Topic